In this video I'm going to show you how to make liquid oxygen from the air. To make liquid oxygen from the air you'll need some kind of pump. You can use a fish air pump, like a fish tank pump, air bubble pump, or you can use like this type of pump here for blowing up um, inflatable pools, that sort of thing. A piece of uh, Tigon tube, a test tube with some wire tied around the top of it to prevent it from sinking under the liquid nitrogen. You'll need a dewer and you'll need to fill that nearly to the top with liquid nitrogen and slowly pump the air through the tube so that it passes uh, around the cooled uh, test tube and condenses out the oxygen. Oxygen has a lower boiling point than, actually a higher boiling point than uh, liquid nitrogen so it condenses first. And I've pumped it a few times already, about 20 times. Just slow a pumping like this. Let me show you what I got so far. So basically, here's the liquid oxygen. You can see it connecting in the bottom there. Well, oh, oh. well, looks like he's uh, looks like he's managed to uh, get some uh, well, get something it. liquid in his test tube. Well, he's, he's well from the looks of it, he's managed to liquefy air. Liquefy air. But, but the title of the video is liquid oxygen from air. But, but air is meant to comprise of ox, uh, oxygen and nitrogen amongst, well, they're the main, the main thing, so. Allegedly, anyway. So he's got liquid air, which comprises 78% nitrogen and 21% oxygen, which both in liquid form. Are, you have, have very similar uh, boiling points, don't they? Evaporation well, points. It's, it's, absolutely, it's just a coincidence they have very similar, very near boiling points yeah absolutely but you see the thing is the the guy who uploaded the video and obviously who's demonstrating uh this um he thinks oxygen is in the air oh right so he's producing liquid oxygen from air yeah, absolutely oh, wow. but uh, i think i think what we should do i think we need to go and annoy this guy don't you yeah i do yeah uh you can be very intelligent and very good at what you do and you can still be Stupid. Yes. Yeah, well, we're back again. Annoying people with our views and opinions because no, oh, because loads of people really dislike hearing other people's views and opinions. That this is so true, oh, absolutely, of dear, course. Yes. yes, yes. It's like if you if you're in a church and you said to somebody, oh, I'm, I'm a, I don't I don't believe in anything." Oh, well, yeah, they'll and look like, at you and think and cast you out, wouldn't they? Uh, absolutely, and you're looking at them thinking they're all demented absolutely. because they they're believing in, but they're believing something to be true when it can never be proved to be true. Or they're believing their, in... Their belief. Yeah, well, they're believing in something that they can't prove to exist. Which yeah. is which is ridiculous in itself, isn't it, really? When well, you that, think, you is, it, well, is it not? You might as well believe in Bigfoot and aliens. Aliens, and absolutely, of course. Instead, of, belie instead of believing in God, you know, just believe... Yeah. Make, make this um, alien, uh, create this alien idol for you to worship, oh. you know... Can even name it, name a cafe after it as well. Cafe, little alien. Oh, cafe, little alien. You know. Absolutely, of course. But uh, anyways, yeah. So we're back again. What have we got on for everyone's displeasure then, Peter? Well, for everyone's displeasure, because I can tell. Yeah, I can tell. All you globies are in bad moods today. Absolutely, because it's Sunday. Because it's Sunday, isn't it? And you don't like religion, do you? Oh. And all these religious people are in a better mood because they're out today uh, congregating. Their lives. Congregating. Well, I wouldn't say enjoying oh, their lives, oh, right. but. They're all congregating their churches. Singing from their hearts. All these singing things. from the heart. Singing about joy when there's very little joy yeah. to be had. And you and me are doing the best thing, and that's putting a video together all about man's fabricated world. Absolutely, of course, which is so absolutely true. But anyway, we're going to have a look at liquid oxygen from uh, air. From We're going to follow on from that video. 
because uh, we left her comment and we got into a bit of a debacle with a person. With a person. Uh, OIC Stu lent us, uh, gave us a link or asked us to look at a video which is about the electric energy hoax, which was a presentation at the uh, New Horizons, which is up just, just up the Anne's. road from us. That way? Lytham St Anne's. Oh, right, up that it's, way. Up, it's up that way. It's in that direction. Yeah, we're facing north. Yeah, As it, We're facing north at this very moment. Um, so we're going to have a look at that. Uh, it was done by Lawrence Wright. Lawrence ago. Wright, absolutely, of course. Which is then going to lead us on to the Fisher Trop process. That's if you pronounce trop in the or manner. Whatever, the Fisher Trop process, because it's all about manufacturing synthetic fuel. Synthetic fuel. And then that will take us on to a CO... These, this, uh, this idea that man has to reduce carbon emissions by using the CO2 and see if he can make a fuel from it. Well, well use, use the CO2, put the CO2 to good use and recycle the CO2. Absolutely. Of and course. then that, that would lead us on to this. And you thought Newton could create white, white light from the colour spectrum. Absolutely, because it's our view that if you thought that, then it's our view that, the, absolutely, of course, that view is wrong. Well, you've got mental health problems. Absolutely, and we are actually going to demonstrate why we think that's, that's wrong, wrong as well. Absolutely. You know, unless, of course, people walk around um, having the illusions, hallucinations oh, of hallucin white. Yeah, perhaps everyone's on LSD, perhaps. Maybe so, maybe people are on colour drugs. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. Where no, they're I given all of these colour drugs and they, they instantly see white everywhere. Wow. Oh, yeah. I've seen white man. Oh, yeah. White man. Yeah. I've seen white light. Newton, oh, years ago. New wow, I can see white light, man. Oh, wow. Uh, anyway, come anyway, on. Anyway, let's get on. Let's yeah, not get into a racist uh, discussion now. Absolutely, of course. Now, so we've got, uh, we've, we started off the video with this liquid oxygen from air, uploaded by SciTube HD uh, in 2016, okay? And um, now we'll just mute that because we don't want to. Let's just play the video. So he's got his little uh, sample uh, sample in, his, in the test tube, and you can see there's a little bit there, okay, in the bottom. Now he thinks, the guy thinks he's getting liquid oxygen. Does okay. he mention anything about liquid nitrogen? Mentions nothing about liquid nitrogen. He's thinking, he does mention that the, a, the evaporation point of liquid nitrogen and liquid oxygen is very close. Yeah, because not, not liquid nitrogen has a higher evaporation, higher boiling point, which means it will boil off first Absolutely. to leave or b evaporate. What he thinks. Absolutely. Liquid of course, oxygen. isn't it better to use the evaporation point? Yeah. The point at which the substance evaporates, yeah. of course, isn't it? That makes it so much easier to understand. Um, but um, so he's he's testing it with a magnet because oxygen is alleged to be paramagnetic. Mm -hmm. So he's dipping the magnet into the liquid nitrogen and pulling it out to show everybody uh, that liquid nitrogen doesn't stick to the magnet. So it just evaporates. It just evaporates off from the magnet. Uh, let's move this along. Now he's do, you, doing this now with the. Uh, he's going to do this now with the. There you go. He's pulled. He's pulled the magnet out from the test tube of liquid oxygen, and you can see that there's a little droplet. A little droplet that's still sticking. Cling on. A cling. cling on. Yeah, clinging to the m magnet. Okay. You can see it there. Look, there you go. Look. Oh, wow, yeah. Can we see it? Can we see it yeah, there? You can see it there. You can yeah. see it there. Now, the guy from this demonstration, from him actually doing this, going on the information he's been told about oxygen and the properties of oxygen, he's going to be thinking that he's got oxygen in the test tube. Liquid oxygen. Liquid oxygen in the yeah. test tube because it's paramagnetic. It's actually sticky. He's seen the difference between the liquid nitrogen dipping the magnet into the liquid nitrogen and dipping it into the test tube. The, the yeah. liquid oxygen, or that liquid in the test tube, appears to stick or be uh, um, attracted to that magnet. Yeah, but one thing we have to remember, well, there's a couple of things we have to remember in this. Firstly, his liquid nitrogen he's got in his flask has been manufactured in a different manner to the liquid air that he's called down in his test tube absolutely of course it's completely different we've also got to remember that before he placed his 
magnet into the liquid nitrogen. Into the liquid oxygen? No, hold on, into the liquid nitrogen. It was at room temperature. Oh, sorry, yeah, okay. The magnet was at room temperature. Was at room temperature, absolutely. So are you going to have the same kind of effect than if the liquid magnet, or if, if the magnet was reduced in temperature because he's placed it in, in liquid words, nitrogen yeah. uh -huh. and then he places it in his test tube? In other words, what you're saying is he didn't really carry out a very controlled demonstration. Because he should have uh, uh, brought the temperature of that magnet back to room temperature and then dipped it in his so after tube. So after he's dipping the magnet into the liquid nitrogen, he should have allowed the magnet to reach room temperature, temperature again yeah. and then introduce it into the test tube. tube. Then you yep. can tell whether there is a difference. Then you, could be, you can be sure that there is a difference, if yeah. any. But unfortunately, the guy didn't do it. No. So the magnet was at very sub... sub well, as it was cold anyway. Sub room temperature yeah. temperatures. Yeah. And then he inserted it into the oxygen. So those the, the drop in the temperature of the magnet could affect... The outcome. The outcome of when the uh, magnet yeah. was withdrawn from the test tube. That's okay. the Okay, that's a very good point. I mean, I would say that it's it it may it may help to adhere the oxygen or the liquid in the test tube, I should say, to the magnet. Yeah, absolutely. The yeah. colder the temperature. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, you because it's absolutely of course. You know, it does make common sense. And then he goes on. He goes on to drop a a, a glowing splint or a lit splint into the test tube, I and mean, we can see it there. You know, it's uh, it's glowing. still lit. It's well, it's it's glowing. Oh, glowing. Well, it's lit splint. The, oh, the, wow, it's yeah. a lit splint. He switches the light off, I believe, and uh, we see it glowing very brightly. Wow. Okay. All of a sudden, it's going glowing brightly. Wow. Well, what yeah. can he do? Yeah, but he's Super thinking dude. that he's he's, so, he's got liquid oxygen from the air. Absolutely, he's thinking he's got liquid oxygen. But, so, so he's carried out two two kind of like things. To make him think that he's got liquid oxygen in the test tube. And the liquid oxygen has come about because there's oxygen in the air as mm. a constituent. And yeah, okay. but he doesn't mention anything about the liquid nitrogen. No, it doesn't mention anything about the liquid nitrogen. But So he's he's a happy chappy. He thinks, well, science is telling him no yeah, porkies at all. But isn't there There's one big thing that here, and that is if we go on the Wikipedia page on liquid oxygen... Uh, yeah, oh, sure, yeah. Oh, sorry, I didn't oh, get that uh, page up. People are waiting. Liquid oxygen. Yes, we know. The liquid oxygen. Well, yeah. Yes, of course, yes. Yeah, uh, oh, look. It's oh, blue. It's blue. Now, liquid oxygen is a pale blue liquid. Good. Okay, that's number one. Now, when so we look, look at his uh, pale... Let's have a look at his pale blue liquid. Let's have a look. Let's see if we can find a pale blue, blue liquid. liquid. Okay. I think, was it the first time he took it out was... No, it was, was the before them. It was before them, wasn't it? Yeah, there. There, wait there. Let's get it back into view. So yeah, he's, got, he's got a, quite a nice uh, sample. Here we go. Now, can yeah. anyone notice any blue liquid, pale blue liquid in the bottom of that test tube? I know no. there's not much there, but it's not pale no. blue in... The, there's no pale blueness no. to that at all. No, is if it? you look at the Wikipedia... Uh, <sighs> Let's just compare. Article. Let's just compare. You can clearly tell... Look, that, but it's that, blue. That's, that's pale something. blue. And when we look at this, this isn't pale blue. Mm. Now, so, so our our understanding of why th 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 this is the case is that the the photo in Wikipedia, the liquid oxygen is derived from a pure oxygen source. In other words, they've got pure oxygen gas, and they've liquefied it. They've liquefied oxygen this. gas to create this. this. Whereas the guy in this video. All he's done is is that he's liquefied Fine. air, yeah. and there's the difference. Yeah. Because in order to manufacture your oxygen, you have to process the air. So the air in this video has is is lacking of that processing. Well, well, which is the, why it's a different color. Yeah. It, it, well, you need the pure oxygen. Absolutely. Yeah. But sure. the thing is, is that there's still some processes going on when he puts his test tube in liquid nitrogen and he's feeding air from a bike pump into the test tube because in order to in order for a gas to liquefy you have to compress it contract it and concentrate it concentrate yeah 
And that's what cryogenics is all about. Yeah, but Li- have- liquefaction of gases. Liquefaction of, of gases. gases. Yeah, but that's that involves more mechanisms. Whereas this is just a exposure to cold temperatures, which is liquefying your air. So, you, but you're still contracting. Yeah, it's still air. being it's still being concentrated, Rated. and it's contracting because of the temperatures. But it's not. This air has not been exposed to the mechanisms right. that are involved in the processing of liquefying oxygen. Sure. Absolutely, yeah. And actually generating that oxygen as well. So you're not exactly going to get the same product. From air. Yeah. Absolutely, you're not going to get the same products. This is the whole point we're mm. trying to say, which is which would explain why this test tube is not blue in colour, or the contents of the test so tube in our are, understanding, are not blue. All he's got is, is, is liquefying air, and as we know, air, when it's concentrated it will show signs of oxygen. It will show similar characteristics as oxygen. Because oxygen is concentrated dry dry air. air. Absolutely, of course, which can be liquefied. Yeah, basically. You know, concentrated dry air can be liquefied to produce this, which Mm. means you'll get the same characteristics, e.g. the glowing, the lit splint will still continue to glow Mm. and it will even glow brighter if it's exposed to it. This doesn't prove... That there's oxygen as a Absolute sure. in the air. Well, this demonstration doesn't prove that he's got liquid oxygen in his test tube at all. But the guy thinks that because of the information he's been given by other people. Mm. In other words, he's using top-down processes in order to interpret what's going on right in front of his eyes. Oh, absolutely. And he shouldn't be doing that, really. Mm. But uh, we, we had to leave a little comment, of course. You know what we're like, don't you? Of course. I'm totally unconvinced oxygen was in that test tube. Everybody would agree air is comburent and that liquid air would demonstrate similar characteristics to as oxygen. Yeah. Um, sorry, that liquid air would demonstrate similar characteristics as liquid oxygen. oxygen. Yeah. Sorry, I, that's what I should have... Come on, hurry up. Let me just, we're, we're... Yeah, I've got to put as liquid, liquid oxygen. Uh, given these... Given these, there is no evidence in the video that oxygen was in the test tube. People only think oxygen is in the test tube. Additionally, liquid oxygen is blue in colour, whereas the liquid in the test tube was clear. Clear. Mm. So the video title ought be Assumed Liquid Oxygen from From Air, air, because that's more uh, more, uh, in line with the contents of the video. Mm. Um, So the guy actually replied, but it was very kind of him, SciTube HD, I was able to burn a match white out in the liquid in a later video. Well, so... You could do that in in, air. You could do that in air, air, in liquid air. air. Liquefied air. As it's evaporating, I'm sure. Yeah. Because they both share similar characteristics. And I, so I replied, I guess you didn't read my comment. I did write that liquid air would demonstrate similar characteristics as liquid oxygen. Mm. You're carrying out your demo with the assumption oxygen is a constituent of air in your mind. Your video does not prove oxygen is in the air as a constituent. There we go. So that's brilliant. But we, yeah, very quickly on this Very one. quickly on this one. But uh, Abdul Zaid Torobali wrote i wonder if it's easier to get oxygen from the air or water see there's people who actually think yeah. you can get oxygen as you know well, oxygen's think, in the air and you can get yeah, it know, extract yeah. it well, from it well man processes the air to make oxygen to make oxygen but absolutely. man doesn't process water to to make oxygen absolutely man doesn't do that because you can't get oxygen from, from water. water absolutely of course unless um, you put something in the water and uh, Tynan Cravey um, left a comment water probably his answer and I, I had to re- respond to that but how I asked him how when there's no oxygen in, in water, water. Yeah. how you can do it when there's no oxygen in water so we go into this debacle about well what, what do you mean there's no oxygen in water where, where are you coming from what's yeah. your understanding I'm what's trying what? to figure out what you're saying actually I'm trying to get my head around this yeah I know yeah and uh, we but actually anyway. wrote. Uh, we actually wrote. Water being made up of hydrogen, oxygen, is a science scam. Yeah. Water, in my opinion, is an element unto itself. itself okay. Yeah. That shares a close affinity with air. Absolutely. Of course. Yes. Air. Air. We could liken air as being dry water. As being dry water, air has a, a close affinity to water. water yeah. Absolutely. Of course. Um, so anyway, he ends well, up saying, as we go, because he wants me to prove it, prove that you're right, prove oh, well, it to me. Where are they making it? How where are they making it? Absolutely, of course. So he asked crazy. me all these questions. I just want, there's a bit, can you, 
right there i just want yeah now he re we reach a point where where we say that uh, or where i say that oxygen is manufactured it's a manufactured gas basically and he replies oxygen is created by nature okay which is this bit here oxygen yeah, 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 is on. created by nature now think of now this is the only reason why we're we're highlighting this is because it's great in the sense that it highlights man's fabricated wealth absolutely of course we can show people how oxygen is made how man manufactures oxygen gas or mm. liquid oxygen we can show people we can go on the web into the web and we can have a little look at lots videos, of videos, diagrams, diagrams information. In, lots of information, how it's done. We could possibly arrange to go and uh, visit mm. an oxygen generation plant mm. to see how it's done. Yeah. But nobody, nobody can show us how nature creates oxygen. Because mm. these, glo these globies think there's 21% oxygen in the air. It must have, how has it gotten there? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I know, but, but these yeah. globies can't show anyone or even us how it got there. Absolutely. So I asked Tynan, you know, if oxygen is manufactured by nature, can you tell me how it's done? Yeah. I'd really, you know, I'd love to know. Yeah. Then I know you're not full of shit. Yeah. You get, get my drift. I like how his reply to those. Answer my questions and I'll try to answer your yeah absolutely so i wrote i did write to him i don't think you know how nature makes oxygen at all because you can't prove oxygen to exist in a natural environment yeah. i mean how would you prove that oxygen is in your natural environment well, how would you do it well they'd, they'd have this the oxygen detector oxygen but the oxygen detector. detector only makes people think, think yeah, oxygen you, is there because you have to calibrate them at you have 21 to, absolutely of course you know um, nobody can, in my in my opinion, but I can show you a pressure swing absorption system and explain to you how air is compressed and concentrated with the help of zeolite molecular sieves to produce a gas stream that is called oxygen. oxygen. There's no oxygen to begin with in the air. Yeah. Now, and this it all boils down. This all focuses on our our, our understanding of fabricationism, Absolutely. man fabricating stuff, because we can show people how man makes zinc metal. We can show people how man makes oxygen, nitrogen. Mm. We can show people how man makes lots of stuff. Yeah. But nobody can show us how nature makes any of this stuff. Nobody. Nobody. Yeah. Yeah, that's the big, big difference. Yeah, there we go. So that's 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 that one. That, that yeah, and the, and the, the it ended uh, very well, anyway, very well. briefly. That did anyway. As soon as he found out, I was a flat earther. Oh well, yeah, because he said go and loosen your sail and go and blow it, and then go and fall off the edge of the earth. Absolutely, of and course. Like, we replied to him, well, if if that was the case, then when you look out at your beach, there'd be no water. There'd be no water. If, all the water's fallen. If off it was as well. possible for any object to fall off yeah. the edge, then how can the water still be there? It's, I mean, when you actually think about it, it is people have got a mental health problem they've got they've got yeah, absolutely. to actually say something like that it's because they're too influenced by information they've been given by it's other crazy. people absolutely of course insane so, people so anyway now o-i-c-s-t-u o-i-c stu okay left us a comment and asked us to have a little look at this video yeah, there we go. Uh, the electric energy it's hoax, hoax. Uh, excuse me on the flat water channel um, Lawrence Wright, who was a man, who was, oh, sorry, was who, a man, but, but now he's turned woman. Oh, right, well, yeah. Lawrence Wright was a man who investigated deeply into the electrical energy issue more than many others. Wow. Wow. Dum, dum, dum. Absolutely, of course. Now, we've watched the video, or I've watched the video, and I have to admit, there's nothing actually... Um, Lawrence talks about, first of all, he talks about in this talk at the Lydon St. Anne's New Horizons... Yeah. He talks about ele electricity, okay? And he talks about the national grid. And he comes across, uh, gives, shares people information on um, certain places in North Wales, for example, where, let me just, let me just play a little bit of this so people, places in North Wales where uh, you've got a pile on, Electric, electricity pile on the ends that stops and you don't get any lines going there on after from it. 
for right, example. Okay. Yeah. It also shows that the power stations have been closed down, old power stations. Uh, mentions ones very close to where we are, uh, like in Connors Key and other places. And when you go and Google them, they look a bit odd. The you know the the imagery that you look at looks a bit odd or suspicious, whatever. And it talks about uh, this uh, place in Wales, North Wales, where they're actually manufacturing, generating electricity from falling water that's come from a reservoir, and then they pump it back up only for it to fall down again and to generate the electricity. Mm. Okay, so but in the in this case, what he showcases is the fact that they are using more electricity than producing. Because okay. they've got to pump the water back up. Because they've got to pump the water back up, absolutely, which costs, well, which uses up a lot of energy, okay. Um, so there's a lot of anomalies, okay, that Lawrence picks up on. I mean, here's a little picture of the Connors Key power station, um, he's talking about well, where's the car park? Where's all the employees? And you know, when you look at the Im when you look at the image there that uh, he's uh, got up on his display, you know, he's thinking, well, how can it be doing all of well, this? Well, there's a car park there. There's a car park there. There's cars. There's cars there. You know, because yeah. a lot of these industrial plants and even power stations do not employ a lot of people. people. They're all they're, automated. It's all automated. Right. You know, Produce you just have guys ones. just checking that everything's working. But anyway, let's not. Uh, but let's not uh, let's not digress rest. too much. So, but then he then he talks about these gas uh, gas supplies and all this kind of stuff. I I believe just off the North Wales coast, and then he talks about um, this guy. Uh, Gerard Moran, did we not? Yeah, watch yeah that's, the that's, the same we, guy. that's the guy we watched the video on. Yeah, we watched a video on on this guy. Um, he's uh, talking about this this voltage that we we can uh, allegedly tap into and uh, not use because I've never seen anyone use yeah. it. Yeah. And um, what else have we got? Um, and then he talks about um, the amounts of money that all of these uh, um, companies, companies are utility companies, are making. And then he talks about oil. Now, this is the interesting part. Now, you see, Lawrence starts up uh, showing pictures of all of these derricks, very close together, pictured on, on the landscape in, on, uh, you know, in oil fields. Mm. Okay? And because he thinks, it's his view, that all of these are just to show that they're not actually drilling for oil at all. Okay? Because as you go through the video, um, like you've got all of these derricks here all lined up very close together okay and it's his view that what they and then he talks about the fisher troughs pro process okay so what he's more or less saying is that he's saying that they're synthesizing they're synthesizing fuel, fuel. okay and they do that out in um, Saudi, Saudi, Arabia. Saudi Arabia so you've got Saudi Aramco okay didn't you have that with the uh, synfuel the Aramco, wasn't it? Uh, some country, yeah. wasn't it? Or something very similar. Oh, that was uh, Kazakhstan or some part of the Soviet Union. Oh, Russia. that was a former part of the former, Soviet Union. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah, sure. But uh, so you got this Saudi Ar Aramco, <clears throat> and he talk. He basically says that the big scam is that they're not drilling for oil, they're not drilling for natural gas, but they're actually manufacturing all this stuff. Yeah, that that's the that's the yeah. when yeah of course now it's our view okay that well, um, from what we've looked from at. what we've looked at you know we can only go on the information we've looked at but we'd say that it's more likely just to address this single point of these derricks being very close together number one is the fact that uh, or is the possibility I should say a lot of these derricks could be drilling at different levels okay. Yeah. Okay. Could be could be half a mile, you know, between different um, derricks. Could even be a whole mile, you know. Who knows? Oh, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. It could be a, a, a very different uh, depths that they're drilling. Mm. Another one was the. Another one is that because from what we gather, looking at oil, we there was. I mean, it could be that before the fresh process, the fracking yeah. process was invented, they had to drill down using one derrick. Yeah, they had to drill down, one hole. And then down. drill another hole down to pump it all up. 
Absolutely. So, so which is why you got two Derricks. Two Derricks, yeah, sure. And that's a possibility because when the Frash, the I don't know, what was it Herbert Frash? Or Herbert or Frash Robert or Frash. Robert Frash or somebody. When Frash invented, I know it's Robert Bosch. Frash invented his uh, and patented his process of fracking, and that just involved one hole. One hole, you only all need. Down, and you could bring up through the same pipe. All of your, all of your stuff. You see, the thing is, is that it's our view, it's always been our view that they make, manufacture exactly. natural gas yeah. and crude oil. Oh, yeah. they, they make it. Well, natural gas is not natural. Yeah, natural gas. You won't find gas naturally, naturally you, down underground. As far as we're concerned, it's all, it's a dissolution of the rock layer. Using chemicals. Using chemicals. Pump it down, you get that dissolution of the of the uh, rock layer, and then it's just... You create, create a lot of pressure. Create a lot of pressure, well, and it's sucked back up, you know, and then it the, goes on to be... Um, refined. Refined, processed, whatever. Okay? So, that, I mean, that's our view. But uh, So we don't tend to think that there's a... We, we tend not to think that there's this some so-called conspiracy to do with oil as oh, another, such. Another thing also is that they've moved to um, uh, Saudi Arabia simply because, well, in our understanding, they moved to Saudi Arabia to do all this because you look how much that's blighted the land there. I know, yeah. I mean, to, for you to it's go not somewhere. To live there. I, I well, if you go to Saudi it. Arabia, it's just desert. The whole, yeah, the whole place. Literally, 90% Absolutely. of the country is just covered in desert. Yeah, yeah. Inhabitable desert. And that's why we get gas from Russia. Because Russia, there's swathes of land where, no, where nobody that lives. In, inhabit, in, inhospitable. Inhabitable. Uninhabitable. So it's easy for them just to drill down, dissolve the rock layer. And if, the, if the ground layer just sinks, you know, they're not bothered. Well, you know, it doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah. You know. But um, so you got. So, but he does talk about the Fisher Trops process. process. Now, um, it's quite interesting the Fisher Chops process simply because um, it's uh, we've been now introduced to uh, the manufacture of synthetic fuels. fuels. In other words, they can act through the Fisher Chops process. They can actually manufacture fuel. Mm. Okay. Oh, come on, mate. Synthetic. Read fuel. out these these paragraphs. Come on. So you have got the Fisher Chops. Do a, I'm going to pronounce it that way because I don't know how trop. to how to Just say pronounce trop. chops. Uh, process is a collection of chemical reactions that converts a mixture of carbon monoxide and hydrogen into liquid hydrocarbons. These reactions occur in the presence of metal catalysts, typically at temperatures of 150 to 300 degrees centigrade and pressures of one to several tens of atmospheres. The process was first developed by Franz Fischer and Hans Trotz at the Kaiser Wilhelm Institute, blah, 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 Germany in 1925. As so it's nearly a hundred years old. It's, it's nearly a one. Time. It's one hundred. It's about one hundred years old. Absolutely. As a premier example of C one chemistry, the Fischer Tropsch process is an important reaction in both coal liquefaction and gas to liquids technology for producing liquid hydrocarbons. So the coal liquefaction would be when you um, get your coal, coal tar, tar, and then you produce methanol oh, from yeah. your uh, coal it's tar. It's been like wood, wood tar. Uh, wood, wood, wood alcohol. Wood alcohol. Absolutely, yeah. of course. They're, it's all the same stuff. Um, Technically producing liquid hydrogen. In the usual implementation, carbon monoxide and hydrogen, the feedstocks for the FT are produced from coal, natural gas or biomass in a process known as gasification. The fischer trops process then converts these gases into a synthetic lubrication oil and synthetic fuel. Uh, the fischer trops process has received intermittent attention as a source of low sulphur diesel fuel and to address the supply or cost of petroleum derived hydrocarbons there we go so there we go i mean there's uh, to me there's nothing um you know there's nothing untoward, untoward about the whole process um i i would imagine that it's uh, i would imagine the thing is is that when we look at the petroleum industry and we look at fuel industry the way they um, um, frack for fuels by dissolving rock layers is probably the best way for them to produce fuel. Hmm. It's a bit like, it's a bit like uh, rubber will always be used for car tyres. So, absolutely. Rubber is the best material for car tyres. Absolutely. But the big problem with, uh, if you're using that as an, as an analogy, 
you can always grow your rubber trees. Oh, well, you yeah. can always get your rubber. Cool. It's cool. renewable cool. to a degree. The trouble is with um, fuel, fuel, and especially fracking deep underground to get your crude, to make your crude oil or to make your natural gas is simply the fact that it's not renewable. You mm. cannot renew all of those dissolved rock layers. Gone. They're gone. Once they're gone, oh. gone. Bye. No more. Yeah, Vance, we had some lovely yeah. cliffs at Dover. Now look at them. They are gone. We now have sandy beaches and the, no cliffs at all. Oh, no, no. Gone forever. The white cliffs of Dover. Yeah, but the point is there, you know. So, so we don't need to go into this too much, do we? No, no, no. no. But what it's drawn our attention to is the... Um, well, the recent developments. The recent developments finding. with climate change, with um, l low carbon footprints, oh, well, yeah. and all this lot. Because because the the EU, from what we gather, the EU is placing, and there's probably lots of other governments around the world, is placing stricter controls on these petrochemical industries to reduce carbon emissions. To reduce carbon emissions, absolutely. Now, in our understand. In our understanding, it is all about sustaining. When we go out and look at nature, it all it all works with less, with hardly any effort. It just works. It just works. Absolutely. The seasons come and go. The years go by, but it all works. Absolutely. It all man, sustains itself. Man it? wants to create his world where he can do the same. Where it, it all works, and he's not relying on nature absolutely so he can he, rely on his own absolutely so for world. example he's not having to mine uh, bauxite anymore because he's recycling the aluminium Minium. that he needs in order to maintain to his to sustain his the demand the demand and the copper yeah for example and the steel and the iron that's why there's such a huge emphasis on people like us recycling our products our products buy. Absolutely, of course. This is why people are trying to make even diesel fuel out of plastics. Absolutely, yeah. You know, all of this kind of stuff. It's all about sustaining a way of life, a standard of living, mm. so that man doesn't have to be that much dependent Dependent. on digging up the ground, mm. digging big holes in the ground, basically. Absolutely. But uh, now, should we show this video or should we show the other video? Because I'm just thinking well, about let's just, copyright. Let's just show the other video that we were that we did show, the the one we the BBC one, the BBC just to one. highlight. Because what I was going to do is uh, that was that one because that might have uh, yeah, anyway. that might have a uh, uh, and it was this one that we we could get away with. I reckon. Yeah, I reckon. Yeah, I reckon we should. So what let's, about the BBC one. Uh, yeah, we did actually watch uh, a BBC one, uh, uploaded by. Wait there, wait, let's have a little look. BBC, I don't think it's there. Wait there. Wait, this one here. That one, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah we did We did actually watch this one. Um, term in turn. Oh, pause it. There we go. Uh, we did actually watch this Horizons. Um, this one centred on uh, turning carbon dioxide into petrol carbon capture. capture. Now, a lot of these titles to these videos are misleading because... They don't just turn carbon dioxide into petrol. They use other substances as well Absolutely. as the carbon dioxide to make petrol. Yeah, and the thing is with this video is that this video does give you a, a better insight into what actually is used to make the synthetic fuel. Absolutely, of course. I don't want to play it. Don't play it. Don't play it. Because of... Uh, it's copywritten. Because it... Absolutely, Worldwide of course. Worldwide banned. Worldwide banned. Absolutely. But we've got... Um, We've got this one now. This is this is really good because at the end of the day, even they're saying methanol fuel from CO two. See, they're all all mentioning the word CO two or you know carbon dioxide simply because of funding and money, because it's the CO two that's most important. But they're only using CO two along with other substances to manufacture methanol. And in our understanding, carbon dioxide is a salt acid gas yeah and when that salt acid gas goes up into the atmosphere i mean we have likened or we have put forward the view that the clouds are made of salt yeah so if man is 
is adding more salt to the atmosphere. Fair, absolutely. Then it's having an, an by way of CO two emissions. emissions. Then it's having some impact on the atmosphere. On the atmosphere, absolutely. But uh, this is ever ever is global. Okay, um, I don't think we should be all right to play this. So yeah, let's have on. a little watch. It's only two and a half minutes long. So let's have a little listen to this. Imagine that the solution to one of the major environmental problems we face was something that we could even benefit from. A solution that, aside from mitigating the problem of global warming, is able to generate benefits in the form of fuels and useful chemicals, and all thanks to surplus energy that would otherwise be lost. The solution exists, and we are going to implement it. The European Union has set several targets for reducing CO2 emissions into the atmosphere to try to avoid the dreaded consequences of climate change, consequences that we already suffer. In recent years, a new vision has emerged, the reuse of CO2 released into the atmosphere which reaches millions of tonnes annually and its transformation into chemical products with a clear industrial application and without negative environmental effects. Thanks to the SPIRE initiative, we are launching a pilot project to efficiently synthesize methanol from the CO2 emissions from a fossil fuel power station, using excess electricity from renewable energy technologies such as wind turbines. Do you want to know how? The CO2 is extracted directly from the source at a cement manufacturing plant, a blast furnace, a power station or any other infrastructure of this kind. A carbon capture plant refines and separates the CO2 from other components. In parallel, using the process of electrolysis, hydrogen is extracted from water. And adding it to the carbon dioxide and making it react over a catalyst, methanol is generated in an extremely efficient manner with highly selective direct conversion. Due to its energy cost, one of the more challenging parts of the process is extracting hydrogen from water, which is compensated by using excess energy from peak production of renewables, which would otherwise be difficult to store effectively. In this way, we can produce methanol, a clean fuel widely used in the industry and utilised as a component of various polymers and solvents. And all this by reusing carbon dioxide, the principal cause of the greenhouse effect. We envisage the daily production of 1,000 kilograms of methanol through a conversion of approximately 1.5 tonnes of CO2 per day. So right, is uh, there we go. Now, um, I'm sure a lot of people probably noticed in the video that they said they can get uh, hydrogen from water mm. when using electrolysis. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. Right, okay, that's a bit of a misnomer, that Absolutely, is actually. Yeah. Absolutely, because they'd have to add something to water so, in order to get the hydrogen. And what do they add to the water? <clears throat> well, well, if everybody watched the previous video that was, that's was that been uh, copywritten. The BBC, the BBC banned. They'll tell you that they use sodium hydroxide absolutely and yeah we know that sodium hydroxide is a hydroxide it contains hydrogen and oxygen we know that sodium hydroxide captures carbon dioxide from a reaction uh, now sodium hydroxide kind of neutralizes or uh, it's a binding material for see for the salt for the salt acid yeah to, to, uh, to um, bind to to bind to it binds to sodium Basically, doesn't it? And we know that you can electrolyze sodium hydroxide Absolutely, to produce hydrogen. hydrogen. Uh, and even small amounts of oxygen. oxygen. But yeah, they do use uh, in, in this in the BBC one, they do the guy actually mentions this guy here, he does actually mention that they use um, sodium hydroxide, hydroxide, okay, in order to mix with the CO two. <clears throat> they, I think they do. They not um, have a sodium so, hydroxide like mist, mist. That's that the idea. CO two is passed through. Yeah. Okay. And then what they do, what I think they do, is they get the 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 mist once it's captured and been saturated with CO two. They they then electrolyze, electrolyze it. it. Mm. Okay, to produce your hydrogen, mm. and then any residual CO two they'll mix with the hydrogen at high pressure and saturate into water to produce your methanol. Mm. Remember, methanol is CH3OH, but it's more than possible to actually manufacture a methanol synth or a synthesized methanol, not using carbon, but using sodium. Mm. So you could have NaH3OH. Mm. Makes sense to me, mm. because when we do actually look at um, 
when the guy taps off the uh, oh, th there. this yeah. bit, when we look at this, where he's tapping off a sample of methanol from here, you can see that it looks froth. When it's frothing, it's white. Mm. Now that could be could indicate the presence of sodium within the methanol. Okay. Yeah. And obviously, the the methanol then goes uh, um, off to be um, Re processed or refined. Absolutely, of course, mm. uh, into uh, its final product. Um, product, which is fuel, petroleum. Mm. You but know. the trouble is with this, with this process, the, uh, and this one here, is that they're having to use electricity to for the electro electrolytic process. And now, where are they going to get the electricity from? Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, to, to be fair, you see, the thing is, all of this has come about simply because of their, they they want to reduce the amount of CO2 that's going into the atmosphere because they are churning out lots of this through industry. Yeah. And at the end of the day, what better way to do it than actually manufacture synth synthetic fuels? Yeah. Okay, so if you've got a chemical plant, uh, like, say, for example, you've got... Uh, or a coal-fired power station. Or you've got a coal-fired power station and you're, you're able to, um, as a waste gas, you're able to collect CO2. Instead of it going... <clears throat> kind of like up into the atmosphere what you could do is you could actually uh, have on site a methanol fuel um, generation plant mm. which would use um, the, CO2. the co2 that you would go, uh, have otherwise go up into the atmosphere you could use that to create methanol uh, which and in so doing, reducing your CO two emissions. emissions. Absolutely, of course. Government because it, it's interesting that in this in this vid, it, it's, it's, it's interesting in this video that they they will use uh, the CO two from blast furnaces, power stations, and even cement works where they mm. make some manufacturing well, cement. Though, we did read a bit about um, where cement works uh, that they do actually in the furnaces where they make cement. Yeah, yeah. actually dropping car tires. Oh, they do, don't they? They just drop them in just to get rid of them. Just to get absolutely, just to get rid of them because um, of the, the 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 intense heat. Just, they just disintegrate. They disappear more or less. Yeah, basically, yeah. <clears throat> absolutely. But yeah, so that, so it to, for for a sustainable economy, for a sustainable lifestyle. Okay, where man doesn't have to kind of like be that much dependent on nature, you know, for all of his stuff, you know. It makes sense to reuse or and utilize the CO two or yeah. the emissions or to use them or see if you can get rid of them. <clears throat> see if you can get rid of them. Now, understanding you can't get rid of them. Absolutely, because you'll still get the CO two. What what goes in must come out. So yeah. you'll still get CO two coming out in your um, yeah. Yeah. in your fuel. Yeah, that's that's then burned. You know, uh, your synthetic fuel. Um, so because methanol is CH three O H C H three O H yeah C H so it's still a hydrocarbon absolutely of course it's still and a petrol's, hydrocarbon petrol's a hydrocarbon petrol's a hydrocarbon yeah, absolutely is. of course but uh, so we so, can, so so no we don't think there's a, we don't think there's any anything devious or no but, but it's interesting it's, you know they're using a hundred years ago Fisher Trop designed a process to make synthetic fuels. Absolutely. Well, yeah, but it's all been done years ago. Yeah, no, no. All of it's been done years ago, you yeah. know. But the fuel they were using before the Fisher Trop process is synthetic, was synthetic. Was synthetic. All fuel all is, fuel is, is synthetic. synthetic. Apart, well, exist. apart from wood, if you burn wood. Oh, well, yeah. Or if you burn coal. Natural stuff. Natural stuff. But when you're talking about crude oil, when you're talking about natural gas, when you're talking about this kind of uh, methanol, when you're talking about uh, synthetic fuel, it's all manufactured, fabricated stuff. Yeah, basically. Fuels, yeah. absolutely, that cannot be replaced once it's been combusted. Mm. Absolutely, of course. Anyway, come on. So that's that out of the way. So thank well, you very much, on, OICSTU, for uh, giving us that uh, information. We've got uh, 10 minutes left. And we've got 10 minutes left to talk very quickly about, and you thought Newton could create yeah, white light from the colour spectrum. spectrum. Well, it's our view that that view is wrong. Because well, on our last video, I mentioned um, get, to get all the colours from the colour spectrum, mix them all together, and then create your white. Absolutely. Yeah, we had MTL man, MTL man, MTL, MTL man. man. How MTL many man. MTL mans do we need? At 106, you ask about co combining colours to make white. Research Newton's disc. 
easily done. Take a printed colour wheel and rotate. Oh, right, yeah. Oh, right, well, there we go. I'm looking for our one. Because that's... Oh, well, what, you mean this one here? Oh, that, that one there, yeah. Because we did actually go online and we actually had little butchers at some of these uh, videos. And um, it's like this one here. This, oh, right, this yeah. one's quite a nice little one. I think the guy spends an awful lot of time... Making it. Making yeah. it, actually. It's but quite, we, only, we only played the beginning. That's the tools you'll need. Oh, just wait there. Sorry, yeah. Really needs to play the beginning. Here so we there we go. There's his... Uh, DIY ideas at home. Here we go. Absolutely. There you go. There you go. Spin it around. There you go. Look. Well, the, white, right. the, now, the outer the, rim looks white. The outer white. rim looks white, white, but the the where the colours are, you know, the area where the colours are, when it's spun round, that didn't look white. It looked kind of creamish colour. Yeah. Didn't it, really? Sorry, yeah. wait there. Well, to apologise. So, uh, you know, we're kind of intrigued... And we're thinking, but no, that's, no, that's no. not white, that's is not it? That's not white, is it? It's that's no. like brown, creamy yeah, colour. Creamy colour, isn't it? So let's have a look at another one. Let's have a look at another one. We've got this oh this one here as well. Newton's disc. Here we yeah, go. Just play it from there. Over just play here, it from here, here we go. go. The, uh, Wait there. There we go. Now see one side's got, got dark colours on, whereas this side's got very pastely kind colours. of colours. Yeah. And it I mean it does look whitish, but it's not white, is it? The only time you get white is when you lose the colours. Absolutely. The only time you get white is when you lose, lose the, the colours. colours. Absolutely, of course. So, you know, we're, we're kind of like thinking, this 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 has got to be a load of rubbish, this surely, you know. Well, let's do it ourselves. Let's have a go at doing it ourselves. Well, so we we did it ourselves, actually, to be fair. And we can see our, our little disc there um, on, our, on our little uh, disc sander. Yeah. Which so, rotates at quite which a high rotates, speed. Which rotates. I don't know exactly how much that rotates. But it rotates quite high that when you put it up on max, it starts vibrating. Absolutely, because it's, yeah, it's quite a potent uh, little motor, that. Yeah. But now the centre of the disc is white. I've got to point out that out to everybody. The centre of the disc is white. white. Yeah. So we can use that as a gauge to see how white the rest of the disc is Goes. Yeah. or gets. Mm, there we go. And when you look at it, the the disc That's is going quite this fast is going now. quite fast now, and the disc isn't going white, white at, all. at all. No. And this disc is is printed out. It's by been Max Spielman. Yeah, no expense spared. Absolutely, of course. Yeah, proper so colours. Proper colours. Absolutely, but we there's no white there. You can clearly see that the colours of the spectrum. Okay, when they are. You know, when they're rotated when they, when very they're round fast, when they're combining, they do not produce white. white at all. No. Not one bit. bit. No. Okay. Sorry. So so that's that one. But w what we also did was that so everyone's probably who uses computers or some kind of uh, tech, you know, um, is used to the whole idea of RGB. GB. Oh wow! Well, yeah. Okay. Now RGB. Look, so we've got uh, we've got the bit on the colour wheel, but let's yeah, you don't want to go into it too much because of uh, time. Red, green. We want to keep this to under blue. an hour. Because th you'll like this. This is brilliant. This is absolutely brilliant. There you go. Well, um, now we've got RGB. I okay. thought we already had one up. No. Yeah, I did. That one there. That, this one here is. It, this one here so, is perfect. This one here is perfect. This oh, yeah. one here is absolutely perfect. I know it's not the best of images, but but they're showing you how they can make all the colours. All the colours: red, green, green, and blue. blue. Okay, so you can get magenta using red and blue. You can get yellow using red and green, and cyan with green and blue. With green and blue. Okay. Now and you can get white. And you can get white using all of those: all red, of those. green, and blue. Yeah. Right. Okay. So well, and the yellow and magenta and absolutely, cyan. of course. So let's just go and see what we did here with our uh, red, green, blue. Now this disc isn't centralised, okay? Yeah. It's not. It hasn't been centralised because you know. Which but, is why you get the. Uh, sure, but let's let's have a little look at what happens. To this now, what what we're looking for is it to turn white. White. It should turn white, uh, according to the diagram that we looked at. Yeah, but you early. might find you need the yellow, the cyan, and magenta. Oh, it's possible. Yeah, but you're still using the three basic colours. Mm. The three base colours, RGB. And it, it's not no. it's not really turning white well, really, at all. Because you've got the red and the blue are the stronger colours. The red and the blue are the stronger colours. It looks kind of green. a purpley, doesn't it? Yeah, basically. Yeah. That looks kind of purple colour. 
and uh, we had a, we had a sense of colour of well violet. It looks a bit a bit violet. Bit though. violety, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. But uh, sorry. And we've got a green circle in the middle. That's only because it wasn't centralised. Oh, yeah. That's all. But well, there's no white there. No. None whatsoever. Uh, now, you know, yeah, but you know why this is. You know why this is. Why? It's because white is not a colour. White is not a colour. Absolutely, you can't produce white at all. Now, um, so when we look at this diagram here, okay, this is absolute rubbish. Mm. It's just, it's just made up. Yeah, I know. Yeah. It's just been made up. Yeah, but they go on the basis. to people, <coughs> and they just absorb it and think, oh well, all red, green, blue. All the colours we can make have got red, green, blue. Yeah, but a lot of it is is all down to the digital age in that the, the digital uh, uh, equipment uses RGB to make up the colours, to make up an image. To make up an image, yeah, of course. RGB, and this is why RGB has been placed on us, because apparently we have photoreceptors in our eyes, and cones are they cones. No, they're, they're cones. That of red, green, and blue. Red, green, and blue. So we did a video. We did a video uh, some time ago. So we did a video a couple of years ago, 2018 in yeah. April. Yeah, that'd be nearly two years ago. No yellow bananas on globe Earth because if we have red, green, and blue receptors so, in our eyes, we how can we create yellow? How can we pick up yellow? yellow. The colour yellow. When yellow is a primary colour. Yeah, absolutely. We've got to remember. That when we look on our colour wheel, okay, there are only three um, primary colours. The colour wheel or colour circle is an abstract illustrative organisation of colour hues around a circle, which shows the relationships between primary colours, secondary colours, tertiary colours. Yeah, primary so let's colours. Go on, primary colours. A set of primary colours is a set of colourants or coloured lights that can be combined in varying amounts to produce a gamut of colours. Yeah. And when we think about our um, our see that see add, additive mixing of light, they, they've got red, green, blue here. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it's, you know, it's, they, it's ridiculous. Yeah. But your primary colours, they haven't well, even any, got. They haven't. They, they don't even tell you what your primary colours are. Yeah, but any any artist would tell you primary colours are red, green, and blue. Red, green, green and blue. blue. So tell me, how is it no, possible? They're not. they're not red, any green, and blue. Will say that they're blue. Red and yellow. Blue, red and yellow. Oh, there. Because green is a secondary colour because you have to mix the yellow with the Absolutely. blue to make Let's the green. Just... Primary colours. Primary oh, colours. I mean, this is getting me confused. It, it's absolutely primary colours. There, there you go. go. Primary colours. Blue, red and yellow. Blue, red and yellow. yellow. Let's go there and have go. a look. Let's have a look at this. These are your primary, primary colours. colours. There you go. There you go. Open link view image. There we go. These are your primary, primary colours. colours. You've go. got yellow, red, red and blue. What this means is... Is that you can't mix red and blue to make yellow. yellow. You can't m you... mix red and yellow to make blue. In other words, you can't mix any colour to make blue. Basically, yeah. You can't do it. You can't mix any two colours or three colours to make yellow. Hmm. And the same with red. That's why primary, primary colours. colours. Yeah. Absolutely. So when we see colour, okay, how is it possible that the eyes can detect yellow when we do not have cone re photoreceptor cells in our retina to uh, pick identify, up pick yellow. up yellow, yellow. Yeah. in the natural environment? Mm, yeah. Well, this that's is, what we're told anyway. Absolutely. You'll find, generally find, that essentially our whole understanding of colours has been computerised. Basically, yeah. And we're stuck with the RGB, and, and which all is the a load well. of rubbish. And all the others as well. Absolutely. Because they only relate to how a computer or how something digital, digital can create colour. Absolutely. So Absolutely. when we do talk about the electromagnetic spectrum, when we go back to the electromagnetic spectrum and we go back to our um, the, the colours of the rainbow oh, well, yeah. or the colours in the visible spectrum, spectrum yeah. okay we've got to ask ourselves that um you know they do not make up white light yeah because because white is not a colour white is not a colour white colour. is only a tint 
It's a tint. So you add white to red, you'll get a tint of red being pink. Absolutely. If you add white, more white, you'll get whiter. Absolutely. And, and on, the, on the other hand, if you add black to red, you'll get a darker red. Absolutely. And yeah. when you think about it logically, just ask yourself, um, when you go to print, print something out, say a white object on black paper in your printer. So, yeah. Okay. You, you'll find that there's no white ink. Because it relies on the white of the paper. It relies on the white of the paper. Yeah. Absolutely. To give you that that shade as it absolutely were. that's why the that's why a computer you do get black inks though you do get black inks. you do get black inks though don't you you, yeah, you get, get gray inks, but, but that's to create the tone that's to create but the, the tone. the they, shade yeah the white is from the paper absolutely of course but so you know mtl man sorry mtl oh, man no. another this is another example of basically where you know you you you're thinking clutching at straws you're mate. clutching at straws you you certainly do need to do something else well you need if you're going to suggest something at least suggest something to us that we can do that we're going to get the results that you that you uh, expect absolutely of Dear course right, right. But, but there you go but he, the he did leave her worst thing is that they do that demonstration at school they get kids to do they it. get kids to do like that the kids going but it's not going white miss absolutely yeah but the it's kids going white, yeah miss. but because the adults are telling them that it goes white they 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 believe the adults well it's pinkish yeah you know, it's pinkish it's, it's, it's getting whiter though isn't it if you oh and what they'd say is that oh but you need to spin it around a lot faster a lot faster absolutely of course white. but mgl man did leave he said he, he replied uh, you you asked if an em wave could be tuned Sono luminescence could be of interest to you. Well, so far we've not seen anything no, from the colour spectrum EM being wave. tuned. Well, not one EM wave could be. We're looking at all of them. All of them, absolutely. All of those. Tune the whole lot. All of them in the visible spectrum. Radio. To become white light. Radio, microwave, infrared, visible light. Absolutely, of course. So. X-ray, oh. gamma rays, just tune in and then see the difference. Absolutely. So there you have it. Yeah, you a new thought Newton could create white light from the colour spectrum. spectrum. It's clear, as we've just demonstrated. Shated. No way, Jose. No, because white is not a colour. Because white is not a colour. Yeah. So you're not, you can't get a, a non-colour from colour. Absolutely. Yeah? yeah, of course. So so there you have it. And yeah. uh, we've got our... Uh, we've got our meeting on uh, Tuesday, Tuesday yeah, so be, we'll meeting. look forward to seeing Gary. He's bringing along a PIR sensor so we can uh, play oh, around okay. with it yeah. over the following days, which would be great. Good fun. Yeah. And uh, we'll put it to its paces, see what oh. it can do. Yeah, so anyway. That's so right. there you go. So thanks ever so much. And always remember till next, next time, time, if something doesn't make sense, like thinking colours can produce white. Oh, uh, well, there's oxygen in the air. Absolutely. Or thinking, oh, because this colour wheel, our little colour wheel demonstration, does provide uh, evidence in support of our view that the glass of a prism is actually making doing, the white, doing, doing, the doing, magic. doing the magic. magic yeah. It's not the light changing. Yeah. Because think about it, it can't, can it? Absolutely. And yeah, or if you think colours can, can make white, or if you think oxygen's in the yeah. air. Or you think we breathe out carbon dioxide when it's only a salt absolutely. in our breath that or, turns absolutely, lime of course. water milky. Or if you ever thought that you you couldn't drink methanol. Oh, well, yeah. I'm not oh, at 50 well, miles an hour. Oh, well, yeah. That's, yeah. Absolutely. Anyway, come on. It's all nonsense. Absolutely. So thanks ever so much, and we'll see, see you next time. time. Okay. Bye. Tell her. The Earth isn't round. It's flat. How do you know? I've observed it in all my travels over Europe. It's flat. Everywhere it's flat.